Hello and welcome to another DOffer v3 tutorial. Today we will be learning about the beacon command and how it is used to create fake access points. So creating the appearance of Wi-Fi networks that are not actually there. As usual, the reminder that we have more videos on the DOffer v3 on this channel, so be sure to check them out if you haven't already. You will need an ESP8266 board that is flashed with the latest DOffer v3 firmware. Luckily for you, we sell these beautiful Andromeda boards at spacehoon.com. They are manufactured by us and you can directly support our small business by purchasing one. Okay, now before we get started, I have to explain a bit about what beacon frames are, so you can understand what the beacon command is for. And here I have a screen recording of an iOS device, uh, which I will be using for testing. And I, sorry, I have to blur pretty much all of these network names. So I have Wi-Fi on and my device is telling me the networks that are in my area. But how does our device know that there are networks around and how they are called and whether or not they need a password? That is all information transferred by beacon frames. So each access point or each network you see in the list here is a router that is constantly sending these beacon frames. They are a type of advertisement frames, so packets that contain all important information about the network, like the name, the MAC address, the channel, the encryption, and what features it supports. Now, what if we send those packets, but there's no real network behind them? We could send these advertisements for something that doesn't exist. That's what we are going to do now with the beacon command. So to start, I'm going to connect to the Hunitor and connect to my Andromeda board. And the first thing we will do to get an overview of the beacon command is type help beacon. So now we can see all the arguments. We see that nearly everything is optional except the first parameter, which is for the SSID. As I said, the beacon command is sending beacon frames so we can create access points or advertise access points that are not actually there. It's basically false advertisement. Let's go over it argument by argument. First we have dash SSID and that is the network name. So here's an example how you could write that. Um, if you put it in quotes, then you can put spaces uh, in each SSID and you can specify multiple SSIDs by separating them with a comma. Then we have dash from, this is the sender MAC address. So the MAC address of the access point itself. We can declare one if we want that. Usually we don't really specify one. It will pick a random MAC address for us. Doesn't really play um, a big role, but if you want to experiment, then you can specify a custom sender MAC address. Next one is the receiver MAC address. So who is going to receive these packets? So by default, this is set to broadcast. So any device in your area would receive and interpret those packets because they think it's for them because when it says broadcast it's basically for everyone but if you want and you know the MAC address of a specific device you're targeting you can specify that and then only that device will see the beacon frames you are sending next we have um, the encryption or dash enc this is for specifying whether or not the network you are creating or faking uh, should be open or wpa2 encrypted other encryption methods are currently not supported, um, but if they are, you will see it here. So the next one is dash ch or channel, and that's basically for telling the DOffer on which channel to send these packets. Um, by default, it's channel one, which is the most popular one, but um, you can set it to another channel and see if that improves the performance maybe. Because if you are in an area with a lot of Wi-Fi, you might want to switch to another channel. So the next one is dash R, which stands for rate, and that's the packets per second per SSID. So usually a router sends about 10 beacon frames per second. And that's also the default value of this argument. However, we can set this higher. So we would just send more advertisements. And by doing that, uh, devices would have been an easier time picking up your network and maybe see it faster. Then we have dash M. This is for scanning or seeing whenever a device is trying to connect to your fake access point. We made another video specifically for authentication scans. Check that out if you're interested. Um, I will be going over this uh, in this video as well, but not as in depth as in the other video. Dash save is for saving probe requests we pick up while running the authentication scan. Also something you can learn more about in our other video. 
dash T is for the attack timeout. So by default, um, you start the beacon attack and after five minutes, it will automatically stop, but you can specify a custom time here. Okay, now let's run a simple example. So here I'm running everything with the default arguments. The only thing I tell this command is to create one fake access point with the specified SSID. So now that this is started, you can see all important parameters here once again. So we have a random generated BSSID, that's the sender address. We have the receiver address, which is everyone. Um, funny that this is actually hidden by my demo mode. It's all sent on channel one with 10 packets per second. The networks are open. The attack will stop after five minutes. We do not scan for authentications and we specified one SSID and each SSID is listed below as well. So now let's see if we can pick up this network. So here's my test device. It is scanning and there we have our network. Now, the thing is, this is a fake network, obviously. So I can click to connect to that network, but it will tell me that it's unable to, which is not surprising because this is not a real network, yet it appears in the list. Now there's also a shorter version of writing the same command. So instead of saying dash SSID, you can also just leave that out. It's just important that the first argument you specify is the SSID. And we can also specify multiple SSIDs like this. Let's see if it's picked up. Now I can see one network, but I don't see both. So what I'm going to do is stop my attack. So I copied the command from before, but now I'm specifying a higher packet rate. So let's try 30. I'm sending three times as many packets. And now let's see if that has an impact. Yeah, I can immediately see both networks appear on my test device. So both the packet rate and the channels can have an impact on whether or not clients will see your network. So in an area where there's not much Wi-Fi, you will probably have a much easier time advertising your fake access points. In a area that is crowded with Wi-Fi, you will have problems advertising your fake networks because there are so many other advertisements floating around. Okay, now I want to create a fake access point, but also be notified whenever someone is trying to connect to it. So for that, I'm going to think of a great SSID that people want to connect to. And then I'm going to specify dash M so I can see the authentication requests that are sent. And I'm also specifying dash save to save any probe requests I'm picking up. Um, I will explain that later, but let's just start the command. And we see that we started a beacon attack here, but also a authentication scan. Now let's switch to our test device. So it picked up our network and I'm going to click on it to connect to it. And it was unable to connect because it's still not a real network, but we can now see all the authentication requests this device sent. We can see its MAC address or the random MAC address it is using to connect to it. Uh, we see the SSID it's connecting to and we see the BSSID of the network. So that would be the BSSID um, here. And we see the signal strength, so whether or not this device is close to us or not. Uh, minus 45 is actually pretty close um, or has a very good reception. And yeah, we can see just how often and how long is it trying to connect to our network. So this is all done by specifying dash M because with dash M we are starting a authentication scan. So we are listening to whenever someone is trying to connect to our beacons. But I also specified dash save and I'm going to show you what that is for now. So first I'm going to stop this attack and this scan. So now I'm going to look at the station scan results by typing results st. And I'm doing that because if the scan picked up any probe requests, they would be saved in the station scan results. And here we see actually a lot of probe requests it picked up. And we see one in particular, and that's Hunfei. So that's one I created. The other ones I probably have to blur. Um, yeah, we know that there are devices around here that probe for different networks. They ask actively, hey, is a network with this name around? The cool thing is we listened to those requests and we saved those requests without running a station scan. We just combined three things. We 
created a fake access point, we listened for authentications, but we also listened for other requests for networks. And now with that information, we can run another beacon attack, specifically with that SSID we know uh, devices are looking for, and we're going to monitor. And now it is very likely, as you can see here, that a device that knows this network uh, is trying to connect to it automatically when it sees it. Luckily for our target here, we don't actually do anything evil. We just advertise a network that's not really there and the device is only signal signaling to us that it wants to connect, but it can't because we haven't actually created a network for it to connect to. Another thing you can do is create a fake access point that appears to be WPA2 encrypted. And you can do that by typing beacon, then you have a super secure SSID, and then you say dash ENC WPA2, so it will create a WPA2 network. We are also going to monitor if someone is trying to connect to it. So we see here it's popped up in our network list, and this time it has a little lock icon beside its name. So we know this is a password protected network, and because this network requires a password, if we try to connect to it, our device will also ask us for a password. We can just type in whatever, because this is not a real network anyway, and click join. And it will tell us that it's unable to connect to it. But in our Hunitor, we see again the authentication requests to that network. Okay, another cool thing I want to show you is this article. This is very recent. And yeah, as the title says, iPhone bug breaks Wi-Fi when you join hotspot with unusual name. So if we scroll down, we can actually see the network name that is so unusual that it breaks the iPhone and it's here. It's percent %p, percent %s, percent %s, percent %s, percent %s, percent %n. Crazy, right? And we can actually see a little GIF here that shows what happens if you try to connect to a network with that name. So it seems like someone found a severe bug in iOS and it's funny to me because it's such a simple thing. Obviously, this is not super bad because you can't extract any data uh, of that device or anything, but still you are able to confuse iOS or at least iPhone devices by simply creating a network with this SSID. And you know what? I have an iOS device here. Let's try that out. So I copied the SSID from the article and I will just put that in here. So I create one fake access point with exactly that SSID, um, but I also want to monitor if the connection requests actually go through. So just creating a network with that name isn't going to do anything, but as soon as you try to connect, funny things happen. So first of all, you can see uh, the device is connecting, 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 but we don't see any authentication requests. It says it's unable to connect. I click OK. Now it's suddenly gone. What? This is actually very funny. Uh, I tried this attack three times now and each time I got a different result. First, I connected to the network and then I was unable to connect to any other network. It would just keep on trying to connect to that funny SSID and I had to disable Wi-Fi and try to reset things until it suddenly was able to connect to other networks again. Then the second time I run it, uh, you saw the result. It tried to connect for a long time to that network, but it never sent any authentication requests. And now the third time I'm still running that attack and I'm actually sending a hundred packets per second, yet my device doesn't see the SSID I'm sending. Um, very interesting. There's probably something bad happening inside the code. So yeah, this is super interesting. You can try that out. So I'm using an iPad here as a test device and not an iPhone. So maybe that's why I don't get the exact same result as described in this article. But hey, if you have a iOS device, you are free to try this out on. If you watch this video months later, there's probably an update that fixes this problem. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there are other combination of uh, SSIDs that could still create problems. Um, even on other devices. I'm pretty sure there are a lot of Android devices that have similar problems just because Android is such a segmented market and there are a lot of different code bases being used in the background and, and Wi-Fi stacks and a lot of them are not really updated. So Wi-Fi has a lot of 
security issues, but it's mostly down to the implementation. And if you want a better explanation about this bug and learn more about it, I will link the article in the video description. I just think this is funny how an SSID can trigger this problem. But yeah, this is so interesting about Wi-Fi and why having a tool that lets you experiment with a bunch of these um, parameters um, is so cool. So yeah, this is pretty much it for the beacon command. I think this is super interesting. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any questions, let me know. If you want to support us, you can buy the Andromeda board at spaceroom.com. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see upcoming tutorials and projects. So yeah, thanks for watching and have a nice day.